Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey everyone, if you're watching this podcast, then it's probably safe to say that you're like me and you love hunting, shooting sports, and of course, you support conservation of wildlife and wild places. I really believe in the power of free market principles. So I wanna ask you today to join me in making an impact and consider supporting companies like Ruger, Onyx Hunt, and Dead Downwind that are not only supporting this podcast, but they are also supporting the values and traditions that we live out day to day. Thank you all for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are coming at you live from Total Archery Challenge in Big Sky, Montana. And I am joined today by the Bear Archery Trophy Ridge uh, CEO John Linnea and Jeff Pease. Jeff, I'm not sure your official title. National Account Manager. National Account Manager. These are the guys that are making it happen for all of us. And you guys are going to see, those of you that are watching, lots of people coming and going. You're going to hear some screaming. There's people zip lining behind us. There's helicopters. I don't know. There's a lot going on here. A lot going on. Yeah. It's fun. But it's pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now, you guys, we were at, now, uh, Jeff, you weren't last weekend at. Uh, TAC at Park City, but John and I were at TAC in Park City, and the last two weekends, I mean, I'm not going to lie, this spectacular scenery is just, like, is spoiling, actually. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> it's you amazing. missed out last weekend. I did. This is our second one in a row. Yeah, last weekend was awesome. Weather was beautiful, ton of shooters, and yeah. just a, a great setting for that event, for sure. Yeah, they have uh, the RMEF, um, I don't know, Mountain Fest at the same mm -hmm. time, yep. so they have live entertainment and all kinds of it's just it was a great event it was super awesome and today we're just getting kicked off here so we wanted to try to get this podcast in before hopefully it gets chaotic up here in big sky Absolutely. it will so you guys are here now you john you've been with with bear now for what three years uh, a little over actually right about two years i guess i started in august of 2020 in the middle of the pandemic so um that was an interesting time but no, I spent my whole career in this industry, mm -hmm. uh, but in a couple different places. But um, yeah, we've worked at, with each other at a at, previous. We did, we did, yeah. When I was at Arcus, and mm -hmm. um, and so this is this opportunity came up in August of 2020, and uh, fortunate enough to to be here with this team, and I've had a blast the last two years. So um, it's it's been a lot of fun. And Jeff, you've been in the sales industry and archery industry for. I have. I've been uh, with Bear Archery or Escalade for 20 year, 22 years now. So I started in the year 2000. So I've seen a lot of ups and downs and lots of changes when, within our building. And Jeff actually hunts with my whitetail outfitter, David Westmoreland, who um, used to be a bear rep also. He did, yes. And uh, that's kind of a, a one part of how I ended up getting connected with this team. But it's such a small world. What I love about the crew here is not only do you guys know your stuff about archery, like John watching you shoot, listening to you talk about shooting is just incredibly impressive. Appreciate that. But you're also hunters. And so that really, I think, um, really lives true to what Fred Bear wanted with his brand. And it really honors his legacy, you know, having a team behind the brand, the Bear Archery brand, just being associated with that name for me is an incredible honor. Um, and, and knowing that the team behind the brand is, is really you know, significant in, in telling his story and, and how it should be. Yeah, I mean, we, we sell products, you know, that, that aren't just hunting products, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but the majority of what we do is hunting based. And I would say that um, not everybody in our, in our team, but 99% of our team, um, that's what we're passionate about is hunting, is bow hunting. So I think the products, the way we build them, the way we design them, um, field testing, you know, events like this, that's what we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you see it in the products that we build and uh, I, I think customers can see that as well. So, Our leader was the most iconic bow hunter in the world, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool to get up every day and go do it, you know, and knowing that finishing and continuing what he started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got so many incredible 
moments that he's captured. And when you listen to him talk, like I've watched some really old interviews about with Fred and and he'll be on there and he'll be like, oh man, I'm not very good, but I know this guy in Alaska. I can't remember his name. He was always just so humble also of like, hey, I'm, I'm out here and I'm putting myself out there, but I'm just really, I love bow hunting and I want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to bow hunt, which has been very core to the lineup with bear archery. We have high-end bows um, that you know, the most competitive archers are going to want to shoot, but we also have bows that are as competitive, more price point driven so that everyone can have access to bow hunting and that's really something i think that was really important to fred bear it was is to get everybody in the bow hunting was his main goal you know and if you watch his hunts today you know he started filming hunts way before anybody else did and the camera that they had to haul around was far different ginormous <laughs> right but so, i don't know we have three right now so was, i'm not sure what's worse it was pretty challenging it was a real it was a real so yeah, it, was, it, was yeah. A, it was a pretty big deal to film your hunt back then yeah. you know jeff's right i think access was the key thing and although Fred was a big game hunter um, you know everything was a trophy to him and I mean when you read yeah. his books and his the field notes and watch the videos it was uh, very evident that access was the big thing to him and he wanted everybody to experience the outdoors um, and like you said when you look at our lineup you know whether it's somebody that's wanting their first bow and they're six years old mm-hmm. um, we have that offering but we build as good of a high-end bow as anybody on the market mm-hmm. and technology that that proves that and then same thing with accessories you know we build accessories from what, $39 to $400. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, having a product for anybody and everybody, especially a whole family, I think that's the important part is that, you know, a family can come in and buy products from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, and we have that. So it, it's, it's a nice benefit. Well, from the, like you said, from the time you're a little bitty to any age, you yeah. know, we have a bow that will work for you. And I mean, I, I, you know, to, to speak to the te- advancement in technology, you know, obviously we still have the traditional lineup here, but we've also morphed into this whole technology era with our digital react sites this year. Um, you know, we have such opposite ends of the archery spectrum mm-hmm. from those guys that are true pur- purists you know, and want to have that, you know, traditional connection to people like me that I'm super stoked. I picked up the digital react site shop, you know, uh, zeroed it at 20 yards, got my chronograph speed and I'm nailing it at like 85 yards now and consistently. And that's something before for me to get accurate at those distances would have taken me a week, week and a half to accomplish, you know, of shooting and, and really trying to find it like fine tune and slide in those pins. And the stuff that we've come up with is incredible. What's nice too, is you see that broad range of technology. And we had a gentleman here earlier that had a digital react sight on his bow so he was all the way at that spectrum but he was really interested in that traditional mm-hmm. stuff too so he covered the whole thing mm-hmm. yeah, it's weird to see you know you've got a bow that you know a traditional bow back that is unchanged since the 50s and we're still building them by hand in Gainesville on many of the same tools and forms that were built that, that Fred built them so you've got that piece and then you know in this site um, in my 20 years in this industry this site is the coolest project I've ever been a part of yeah and I think it's one of those projects that Um, When you see a product that any bow hunter or archer can take and from a confidence standpoint, you know, it it gives them something that they either didn't have or it's just an advantage. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that product. The Digital React site is, um, it's just that. It's just a confidence builder. Um, So, like I said, it's the coolest product I've ever been a part of. Well, and me coming kind of also from a little bit of long-range shooting background, you know, this is what we're doing with modern-day ballistics and cartridges and, and like, firearms are doing things that we never thought were possible. And, you know, this... This site is using that same data information um, with what you're doing with with your projectile drag and your velocity, figuring out your weights, and you know just really helping you sink it in. And and there's going to be a lot of people that are like, oh, that you shouldn't be able to do that or this and that. I'm all about opportunity and hunters having opportunity, but I'm also about field ethics. And if I can confidently and ethically take a shot and know that my arrow is going to go where I want it to go. Um, that's all that's saying a lot too you know um like and i'm not obviously i'm shooting foam at 85 yards but this is the first year in my bow hunting career i've ever been able to do that and that's that's really fun for me because if i can be consistent with that i know when i go to take a shot in my whitetail deer stand at 20 or 25 yards it's it's a 10 ringer it's no problem 
Yeah, I think when, when people see the site, they're a little bit intimidated, think it might be difficult, and they compare it to, you know, ballistics, but mm -hmm. it's so much simpler than that. Oh, it's so you know, simple. It's, it, it's so easy, and as soon as, as soon as you can explain it to somebody or they can use it, yeah. they get it right off the bat, you know, the aha moment, and, uh, you know, so many people says, you know, never use, never need to use anything ever again, you know, other than that, just that the React technology just speeds everything up. And a lot of people are kind of confused too. They think, well, do, does it, do you range the target with the site? And then it gives you that. It's like, no, yeah. this does not range a target uh -huh. for you. All it is, is an electronic readout on the side of the site that you just dial the knob and it, it electronically reads out, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50. But the nice thing for me, because I have a shorter draw length, so I have a little bit of disparity in speed, um, is that I can do half yardages. So instead of having a 20, a 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, there's a pretty big difference in 50 and 60 for me. Mm -hmm. And I can actually fine tune it, you know, hey, I've got a 3D target at, you know, 53. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to gap pins, oh, yeah. it kind of right takes on the that number. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love that about single pins in general even mm -hmm. yeah but hold holding a pin high at 50 right take your 50 pin and holding it oh i'm gonna hold it three inches high if it's 53 or 54 you dial the site mm -hmm. and i agree i think the the confusion on this product is that people don't really understand it um, it's not a range finding product no you know and we have it in a traditional method and a digital method but um, it's really just math that's built into the site. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's taking into all the stuff you talked about rifle ballistics, right? Shoot two different distances and then let the math, the site do the math. Mm -hmm. um, and then the electronic version is just a simpler way because you can take the same math, but you can input your speed, you can um, change profiles, you can add arrows so you can shoot, you can shoot five different arrow weights if you want to mm -hmm. and change the button and you're good to go. So um, yeah, it, it's just one of those confidence things of, hey, I can set up a bow, sight in a sight up to 100 yards in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's never been anything like that. And then the confidence is that, yeah, you see something at 68 yards, you put it at 68 yards, you're not splitting a 60 and a 70 pin. So it's, it's cool. So I what you realize a, a bunch of different things about the site too, and we've talked about it numerous times, is I don't like to mess with my bow. I don't like to change my rest or my weight or anything. And anymore after that, it doesn't really matter because I can be sighted back in to 110 or 120 yards in 10 minutes. So if I want to make a change to my bow, it's not like, well, now I got to go through the whole sighting process again. Mm -hmm. It takes no time at all. It's five or 10 minutes. So as when you're out visiting your accounts, what are some of the most like common questions that our listeners and viewers, you know, might be kind of thinking in the back of their head because you're out there, you're meeting with customers and, and dealers all the time. I mean, there's got to be, you know, your top three or four questions that like constantly get asked. Most people think it's range finding. You know, that's the that's the probably the number one thing they think it's a range finder and it's not. Um, you ask a lot of people about React technology and you can tell right away whether they get it or not. They'll shake their head yes sometimes, but sometimes they really don't get it. So it's it's really as basic as sighting in two pins and the rest of your site is already sighted in for you. So once once they get that in their mind, then they get it. And then really the the really aha moment is when they use it, yeah. you know, because then they, they go through it because there's still some doubt that says, you know, I'm going to sight in two pins and then you're out to 100, 120. And yeah. some people just don't believe it. But when when they use it, they definitely. It makes it a lot easier to win the truck, you guys. <laughs> no, there's no okay? doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know they're giving away the truck, but they're making it a lot easier for you to win if you're using the right site. That's true. Yeah, and that's that's pretty awesome. Like you pay to pay to play and get drawn out of a hat, you could win a truck at the end of the year, yep. and and you guys are making the technology to make it so much easier, which is awesome. Yeah, this is the second year we've done the the truck through TAC, and last year it was a bear truck, and it was wrapped in Fred Bear camo and had our other brands on it, and we thought with the Digital React coming out this year, um, Trophy Ridge was the way to go on the truck. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's got some cool graphics on it with Digital React, and it's got uh, you know the topo map on it. And it's just a, a really really cool truck. But I understand they've had more entries this year um, than they've ever had. That's incredible in, in terms of shooting for it. So yeah, you still got to hit 111 shard, yard shot, um, you know, and, and hit the 12 ring. The but, 12 uh, ring, yeah. Uh, but it's pretty cool to watch people do it. So. So there's you know there, there's some states that obviously for hunting the Digital React site's not legal, but for the standard React like uh, we were 
the use of the trio or the or the single pin um, you can put a dovetail on that site and you can have your digital site that you can use in those states where it's legal or practicing at home and actually you can use that to kind of um, lay out your site tape so both sites still come with a traditional site tape um, whether you're using the digital or the traditional and the nice thing is like you can pull that dovetail off like if you're hunting, you know, in one state it's not legal, you run in your traditional and then throw the other site back on and go back and forth and you, you don't have to mess around, right? It makes it pretty seamless as yeah. far as, you know, if you're hunting multiple states and you run, want to run that digital technology because you can, or if you go into another state where you can't. There's many platforms that of sites that the React technology is in too. So it's not just digital or just yeah. not a one pin or a, a three pin. Yeah. You know, there's a five pin, there's a seven pin, you know, so there's a, there's a bunch of choices that you can use uh, that are not necessarily digital, um, but the states that it's legal in digital is, is the hottest and most popular right now. Well, and the nice thing too about the React technology is it is interface or user friendly for even people that are small. So like I've got a short draw length, I'm, I'm 26 um, and, and my poundage is just shy of 60 pounds. I'm shooting like 57, 58 and um, I can still get enough speed to use the technology in these. So it's it's an interface that makes it very intuitive and super easy for a lot of people to, to use and have access to. And so I like that about the product as well. It's not just for a guy with a 29 inch draw length. Right, sure. No, absolutely. I think that that's the cool thing about it is, um, you know, this Digital React site is what we're getting a lot of press on and mm -hmm. a lot of interest from people. But there's some people that are not in the market for a $350 site. Yeah. Right? Or maybe it's not legal in their state and they don't want to, you know, take it off during season. So then when you start stepping down and realizing that you can buy a site anywhere from $99 to, you know, $359 and get, you know, in theory, the same technology. Yeah. There's, there's some slight differences. Uh, but the same technology, it's it's a real benefit. Well, I'm still like for whitetail season, I'm I'm going to be running the Escalate with the um, drive sight on it. Like I like that good old fashioned single <laughs> pin for whitetail. Like I want to have what I love about that is you know you can set it up in your yard and I have my sight tape marked and I have my half yardages and it's it's just super intuitive for elk. Um, you know I also like the hot wire sight, which is you know you're too fixed and that the third is a mover. Um, because 2030 for me with elk, you know, I feel good about, but um, I like not having that cluster of pins necessarily. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I, I feel like I do a little bit better with less in my sight picture. The seven pin sight's great, but if I'm on a whitetail deer hunt, it's really hard to focus on a pin for me when there's seven pins in a sight housing. Right. So, you know, it, there's so many options for people yeah. depending on what they want and what, you know, what works for them. Right. That's why the trio is so popular because you have three pins, yeah. you know, so you always have a 20, 30, 40, but then with your React technology, you use your bottom pin as mm -hmm. your distance pin so you can go all the way out to 120 or so. So that's why that's really popular. Yeah, I wear on the hot wire too, and that that one I like also um, with that third as a mover. And yep. um, but you know, it's it just figuring out what works best for your setup and and for your style of hunting too, because um, not everybody is comfortable going elk hunting with a single pin. Now for whitetail, I mean, I'm only going to run a single pin this year. I'm going to just stick with that, and and I really think that that's going to be like the the best thing for me. Um, and for elk though, maybe I want a 20, 30, but their vitals are so big also. It's like, man, you can pretty much set a 40 yard pin and yeah. you're gonna hit that danger space high and low, uh, you know, out to about 45 yards. So, you know, depending on the situation. And you should also check that with your bow, your max point blank. Absolutely. So. Another big feature with the Digital React too is uh, people that have eye problems. So they can't see as good anymore. Yeah. So, you know, when you ran a, a one pin site, you had to look at a site tape and the hash marks on a site tape are so small Tiny. that you don't get it right a lot of times. You know, if you want to shoot, you know, 43 or 57 or whatever it is to get it on that hash marks, very difficult, you know, lining up the pointer with that and not be able to see, or you got to put your glasses on or whatever it is, or the digital readout, even without glasses on, I can see it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I struggle seeing, you know, hash marks that's why i i never used a, a single pin site because i can't see the hash marks but now that you have a digital readout it's much easier to see that's a that's a super valid point so what is your go-to bow john what, do you, what um, is your like right now that's this is yeah right now i'm shooting a refine mm -hmm. i am playing with a bow that we've got coming out this fall mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool but um, i've hunted with a refine for i guess about the last year and a half uh, since we started that one summer of um 
in the bag. It's been summer, well, before last summer, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I love that bow. I, I love our echo cam technology. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you that's know, a super forgiving bow to shoot. I'm also shooting it. It, it is, and I, and I think that it's one of those things where. Um, you get adequate speed, yep. um, even at shorter draw lengths. You know, in, I know you're in that 26 inch mm -hmm. range, um, and then with that adjustable let off on that cam, you know, I, I don't, I don't truthfully prefer high let off. I'm kind of in that middle range. Um, but the people that like the 85 and 90 percent let off, it's an option, and it's so easy to change that cam. So you get the smooth draw, but with the benefit of the speed, and then the opportunity to change let off. So that is one thing with the Echo Cam versus other bows I've shot. It, you know kind of comparing the two i've i've had other bows i've shot that the cam system is just so aggressive that the most i can pull is like 52 pounds mm -hmm. and it just crushes me and when it's cold um like i can't draw I'm like one time nick and i were filming and i had just gotten a new bow and and i tried to draw it and i couldn't draw it and like he had to like pull my arm back <laughs> for me and i'm like what is going on like it was so aggressive i couldn't draw it at all and what I love about our bows is they're so easy to draw. They're mm -hmm. so forgiving and they still have the speed and they still have all those performance characteristics, but it's it's easier for me to pick up and, and be confident using sure. it. Especially like you think about it, you're sitting in a whitetail stand and it's freezing cold and a deer comes in and you've been sitting for four hours and your muscles are all cramped down and man, you have a bow that's hard to draw. like. Yeah. Game you only over. get one shot. You only get, get <laughs> and there's, a, I mean, we've like I, you know, I've hosted TV shows for years, and I mean, I've seen grown men on on early season archery elk hunts that have been sit, like so excited that they they can't draw their yeah, bow. Excitement's big, yeah. Like you know, I mean, this is a thing, and that's yeah. that's one thing I, I love about our echo cams is is they are so smooth. Yeah, and, and I will say, even though that's the bow I'm shooting right now, it's pretty cool when you have the opportunity. You know, we have an awesome lab at our headquarters. We've got a great range. Um, but the opportunity to go back and shoot the different models as we develop them. And I can honestly say, you know, we do build bows at all price points, but there's some really good bows at those mm -hmm. price points. I mean, the new Alaskan we did this year, uh, which falls in like that $550 mark, is one of the nicest bows on the market. Um, it's got a hybrid cam on it, great speed. Um, That's a bow that curve. Chuck Adams is shooting. And Chuck Adams is shooting that mm -hmm. bow. Um, we've sold a lot of Alaskans this year, and yeah. I think it's because it competes with all the high-end stuff out there, but at, you know, $500 mm -hmm. less. So. Um, you can find something at every category of our product line that you can say truthfully, like, oh, you, that bow's not that much better. Like, this this is really, really good. So um, that's the cool part about our product line. What about you? What are you shooting? I shoot a refine also, but I really like the 90% let off. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, 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 you know, once you start that, you can't ever no, go backwards. Don't. You know, it's it's very difficult, but uh, I really like a lot of let off. And, and it's not for everybody, you mm -hmm. know, because it is a little bit more difficult to shoot for some people, mm -hmm. you know, having that let off. But I, I really like it. So, I, I okay, I'm, I'm perplexed. I don't get why it's more difficult for people to shoot because I shoot the let off and I don't see where it's difficult. I don't, there's, I'm a little, yes, like, um, inform me on how this is difficult because I'm looking at it like, it's, okay, it's I'm, sho weight. I'm shooting this bow and it's I love it. Yeah, it's holding weight. And I think it depends on the bows you shot through the years, what you okay. become comfortable with, your release style. I mean, some people are... Um, really like to pull through a shot and you, know, you need the resistance of the weight. Now you can do things if you've got high let off um, and you need the holding weight, you can just jack the bow weight up if you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I like a little higher weight bow, but I like a little less a little less let off as well. Um, but I'm not, not the difference in like 60 and 90, Yeah. you know. Um, but the high let off, especially from, like you said, whitetail woods and stuff like that, you gotta hold a shot for 20 or 30 seconds, it's awesome. So, I mean, that's the cool thing about the cam, right? You mm -hmm. like one thing, Jeff likes another. You know, I have a different, you know, preference, so. We have a the, video clip yeah. of me last year on a bull elk I held at full draw for over three minutes. And he, the bull was five feet from me, and he was standing behind a tree, and he, I could see his nostrils on the ground, and he's trying to look through the tree at us. And I never got a shot on the bull. I mean, <laughs> but I, I couldn't let down because right. he was so close. Yeah, yeah that what are you going to do if I let down he's for sure blowing out of there right, right. and I think that's one thing yeah. as an archer we forget to practice is that hold like when you have a live animal that's moving into a call like being able to hold your bow can be mission critical right. yeah a minute is a long time a minute is a long time it I wanted a really to die. Long time. I actually drew and then set the cam on my yep, knee yep. and I was like oh my gosh how am I gonna do this but I thought well if he steps out he's so close if I just 
even look at him, I'm going to hit him. Yeah. <laughs> like a, lo a lot of archers feet. say yeah. that they've held it for longer than, you know, a minute or two minutes or three minutes, and they have it. You yeah. know, it might seem that long, but if you actually time it, it's it's not very well, long. Well, this one, we, we yeah. went on like camera eternity. and looked because I was like, man, I felt like if I, I, I thought I held it five minutes, and we actually <laughs> looked, and it wasn't. It was just under three minutes, but it felt oh, yeah. like an eternity. It does. You know, um, but that's where that that's really handy. Is But I've been in a situation like that. also that I've held it for a long, time and uh it was a deer hunt in iowa and i held it for over a minute did you, know? you did you were you successful in your execution once you fired the oh shot? yeah absolutely because i was only holding eight pounds yeah. seven pounds yeah and you know once you know of course the adrenaline's, adrenaline's yeah. flowing too so once you get the opportunity and get back up in it you know it's it it feels pretty easy to shoot still yeah no i i love that about them and, and i love the fact that our bows are they're, they're we make bows for everyone you know we don't have like like a disparity of like oh we only make this bow for the girls or whatever our bows are so adjustable from mm -hmm. and that's what's great about them it's not like a fixed draw length on our bows our right. bows are our bows are so adjustable that like my husband could take one of my bows adjust the draw length and poundage and he could be shooting the same bow i am absolutely and i like being on an equal playing field as as men like i don't want to feel like oh i have to shoot the girl bow right because there's a lot of small guys out there that are like man i want to shoot that bow but i'm not a girl so yeah. does this apply <laughs> to me like what's happening you know uh kind of the same same you know sure. line of train of thought I think we've seen most women are the same way. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they want to be, you know, separated that way by a single bow model or whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we build some colors that are probably more specific to women and girls, and they prefer that. But in general, um, I would say... Between, My husband yeah. wants the hot pink yeah. strings. Yeah. I don't know. We oh. were at a bow shop the other day. Somebody had lime green strings on their bare bow, and he's like, why don't I have those? So it's not just the girls that like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, especially that here. There. You see a lot of color combinations. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Customization. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One of the things that I did this year with my bow um, that all of my years of archery, which mind you, I'm kind of in a unique position. I started bow hunting and then my dad started bow hunting and I introduced my husband to bow hunting. So in my household is strange it is I'm like the person that's supposed to have the most experience. And so I really lean on events like this and, and people to help me. And, and one of the things I did this year for the first time is I, um, put a kisser button on my string and I moved my my peep sight up about a quarter inch and that really gave me um, a lot more space between my sight and my arrow fletching mm -hmm. so I can get more distance this year and I can practice farther than I've been able to sure. practice and that's been really awesome I wish I would have done this a long time ago um, but I guess I didn't do enough research into it. I just thought that I'm fixed at, at this draw length and this poundage, and this is the farthest I'm going to get with my shooting. And you know, you as as an archer, you there's so much complexity and personalization to every bow that you really have to dig sometimes for what is going to work for you. Yep. And um, not everybody has the same setup that's why you know like you, most nobody shares bows out here everybody has their own bow you could but i mean it's it's a little tougher to do that it's pretty difficult to find somebody with your exact same setup yeah you know you might have the same draw length but how you anchor for where your peep distance is and all that it's it's pretty difficult that where you could find somebody pick up their bow and shoot it just like they do yeah. and be sighted in yeah we were out shooting the other night in yogi's bow um that gentleman we we were renting his pasture for our mules he's watching us shoot and he's like that blows my mind you guys are shoot, shooting 80 yards because we're just laying him in the phone at 80 and yogi does not have the digital react site but he has a react single pin and i had the digital and he wanted to check out the digital and the guy was just blown away by it and i was like well shoot yogi's bow and he's like really we're like yeah shoot it 80 yards sunk right in the foam he was like i can't believe i just did that yeah, that's pretty rare he was yeah. like i can't it was so cool but i asked him you know what's your draw length yeah. and they had comparable draw lengths right. and, um it was really awesome though and just to see him light up i was the same way you know when i was able to accomplish what i'm doing which i've never done with a bow before since switching to bear and my husband's shooting 98 yards now it's mm -hmm. crazy like he's yeah. hitting 100 yards with his bow he's not even been shooting a, not even a year and a half you know it's crazy yeah. 
if you look at the even the practice range out here, you know, people are shooting so far yeah. nowadays. And, you know, I remember when I started this and even years into it, like you shot 30, maybe 40 yards. Yeah. And you had to be really good to get to 40 yards. So the equipment has changed a lot, but the people in their knowledge in archery and shooting and everything have has grown so much that, you know, that 111 yard shot out there, nobody's scared to shoot that. No. You know? And yeah. that was just ridiculous years ago, you know. Yeah, well, and this is, so one of the reasons I love events like this is I've, I'm an overthinker. I want to over-engineer everything, and I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can to the best of my ability. So when I walk in the woods and I go hunting, that I, I have the best opportunity in ethical harvest. Like, I really, you know, I want to be able to have an ethical harvest and have a successful hunt and, but most importantly, have fun because, mm-hmm. like, when you feel def- defeated or discouraged, it's it's a lot harder to have fun. And, um, you know, when I came, came here last weekend to Park City at the TAC event, Chuck Adams was sitting here and you were sitting here. And um, I, I was going over, are these arrows? I'm lightening up my arrows. And, and, you know, you're reading all of this information about how heavy an arrow you need and what kind of energy you need. And you and Chuck sat down and you guys did the... Um, figure the kinetic energy yeah we were kind of kinetic energy (laughs) and you're like hey you know the arrows you're shooting now that you want to shoot for whitetail that that are you know 50 uh grains lighter than what you were shooting but they're faster so i'm flatter so on the whitetail stand five yards isn't gonna crush me as hard as you know Mm -hmm. it has in the past and like you can hunt elk with these and and i you know i want to be able to come here and talk to somebody who knows more than me and has hunted more elk than me and had more experience than me like yourself and and chuck and and have somebody just kind of reaffirm everything and that's what is so great about coming out here i mean this is the last stop we have before we hit the woods mm-hmm. yeah i mean there's a lot of information out there right there's a wealth of information no matter where you look now it, you know with the internet and um you know i don't care if it's youtube or you know every shop you go into has a different method of tying a peep tying a d loop using kisser buttons not using kisser buttons the bottom line is i think that you've got to be open-minded to the fact that yes maybe something's not exactly the way I would do it or the way you would do it but um, you know by changing your setup and trying different things you're going to find the right fit for mm-hmm. you and you know <clears throat> archery reminds me a lot of golf and the fact that you know you do have to practice right I mean I every time I go golfing and I don't golf as much as I used to so if, if it's a year or a year and a half of, between rounds I can't go out there and get ticked off because I'm not playing you know a perfect round of golf yeah. right um, archery is the same way if you're not at least pulling your bow and and shooting a little bit throughout the year and and really spending some time behind the string you know muscle memory changes Every, everything changes so you can't get frustrated with the fact that you know it's you most likely it's not the bow you know so I, I tell people that is that most of archery is between the ears and um, you know get the right information but trying things will, will make a big difference and you're right this event is is awesome I think that's the reason we got so heavily involved in it last year is because um, having been around target archery um, my entire career um, you know I love target archery but it's a different environment mm-hmm. than this right it's competitive um, you have people that are really associated with certain brands and affiliated that way and this event is you know two or three thousand people that just want to go out and shoot their bow yeah well in Park City there was like four thousand yeah people. it almost well, yeah it was, it's insane it, it, it's it's crazy so it's it's double the number of people you'll get at a lot of um, what I'll call tournament type mm-hmm. events but it's people that are open-minded about talking to other brands mm-hmm. and finding out you know what information is there what technology digital react I mean we get every bow company coming through this booth and we're the bear booth but to talk about trophy yeah. so um, it's an awesome event we love being a part of it and i um, excited to see it continue to grow so it's pretty cool is this your first tack no it's not but uh, you know I, I shot a lot of 3d shoots over the years and been to the tournament shoots and what the biggest thing and the most important thing at, a, at that shoot when people talk is what the score they shot mm-hmm. here that you don't keep score the most important thing here is that was fun to do mm-hmm. you know where the tournament shoots and money shoots and all that it's it's not about the fun of it it's about the score and the money where and it's it's real obvious here when you when you see the practice range and the courses and how they have set up it's all about having fun and when you look at how many people come to this it's three four times as many as people go to the archery or you know the tournament shoots well it's family friendly absolutely and they want to challenge themselves right it's nowhere in the woods are you going to shoot a you know 89 yard shot at an 18 inch polar bear standing behind a tree Mm -hmm. right like but it's it's testing yourself right figure out what you can and can't do and you're not afraid to lose an arrow so um yeah I, i agree with jeff it's just it's a fun environment you might want to shoot cheaper arrows here yeah. when you take hunting. And I don't think they yeah. do. No, no I didn't. I made that mistake. I brought my hunting arrows here because I was like, well, 
I really want to try to like see what my limitations are, capabilities are with my hunting setup, and that could end up costing me. I'm shooting tomorrow, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll make see them every how, day. We'll see how <laughs> this goes. But the people are like, bring more than you thought. I brought 19. I don't know. That yeah, may or fine. may not be enough. I don't know. If I walk <laughs> away with one, I guess I've won. <laughs> uh, arrow companies love this event. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're like, go blow up arrows yeah. on the rocks, please. That's it. <laughs> That's so funny, and and that is what is great out here. That you have littles, you have all ages of people everybody's out here just enjoying the the warm weather i mean i mean we all know how long these winters feel and just nice being out here in in beautiful places and beautiful country and there's good food there's tons of vendors now you guys do a lot of support for these events to help make them happen because obviously they're not they don't come without incredible support from manufacturers in the industry like like bear and trophy ridge no absolutely and like i said i think when the opportunity came up last year we could see this event growing but everybody we talked to that had been to one just kept saying hey you guys have to see this you have to Mm -hmm. see this you got to come see it so we kind of jumped in big and said hey if we're going to do it we've got enough brands that um that we can really support this thing and we did the truck and um we went to all the shoots we sent our team to different different places but um we've had novelty shoots that are specific just to us so we've had a lot of fun doing it and i just don't see it slowing down no i really don't so no, I think it's something that's going to continue to grow, especially as we get more and more women invested in being part of the archery community. And, <clears throat> you know, women right now are the fastest growing demographics in hunting, but we're also crushing it in, in shooting sports, too. And in archery is something I think a lot of women that maybe not maybe don't enjoy firearms but there's no sound, there's no recoil. When you get behind a bow, it's something you can do in your backyard with your littles, with your husband, you know, it's so it's so family friendly for everyone. And I think that is what makes archery as a sport so attractive and really goes into, I think, I don't think Fred Bear could have ever imagined how many women would be picking up a bow and bow hunting and shooting a bow, you know, when he started this company. Yeah, I noticed that I think the first event I went to was um, San Antonio last year. That was like spring break time. And just the first day on the range, I know I saw more women shooting that event than I had ever seen at any yeah. of my like 3D or, or indoor tournaments that I'd ever been to. So um, it was impressive to see. And they weren't just like, you know, women shooting entry-level bows and getting into it. I mean, these were dedicated. I mean, you could tell they loved archery and mm-hmm. wanted to shoot. And it was everything from, you know, our entry level stuff to mid price points to super high end bows. So mm-hmm. um, I, I'm with you. I think that uh, I think you're going to see this grow. And I think that women and children are probably going to be the biggest growing portion of this thing over the next few years. Which is great because we have the legit bow, which goes down to a 14 inch draw length and then up to what, a 30 inch. It's like a huge range yeah. of adjustment. It's like you can buy a kid a bow now, our bow preferably (laughs) and it's it can last three years of growth like it's not like a pair of shoes where you're buying your kid a pair of shoes every six months you can buy them our bow and they've got it for years and it can grow with them and and ultimately they can end up taking it hunting I mean there's it's it's super for that as well I mean this is what we're here for is to make archery accessible for everyone and you you make that investment in your bow for a kid and you know that they're going to have it and they're going to have some great memories behind it yeah when I when I started too and and you still hear it sometimes today that you know I'm going to get a beginner bow you know and what can I get I've never done this before so I need something for a beginner there's not really beginner bows anymore Mm -hmm. you know it's it could be the same for anybody it's just at what price level you fall into and you know and where that will get you started you know and what features are you looking for in your bow you know because they're all a little bit different they all have different you know they all are tremendous you know bows but you know they all have a little different feature a little different benefit or you know different axle to axle depending on what you prefer to shoot and and that's what's so great we have such a great lineup and um i've really enjoyed seeing all the ladies out here and all the kids and and i you know i want to encourage everybody like if you haven't tried a bow i'm not saying you have to buy our bow what i'm saying is go try out bows go to a bow shop go to a good pro shop find some bows get your hands on them give her a shot um you know before you invest your money and think you have to buy the most expensive thing try our bows out and see how they feel because really I think um, the performance aspects of our bows how quiet they are the speeds that you need to draw our camp system is incredible I mean the bow feels great in your hand um, when you put that through the paces and you line us up with any manufacturer uh, our price sets us apart and our performance is there and, and that's worth trying 100% 
So, well, you guys, uh, any big hunts coming up soon? Where we, where's our first bow hunt of the year? Um, I've got a Colorado um, elk hunt in September. Yeah, I'm going to be down there. We have to hook up when awesome. we're... Awesome. Because we're down at the same time, You remember? are, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. That, that's all I've got on the books right now. Um, I didn't draw any other tags, so... Um, the fall is a busy time for us as well, so something may slide in, but that's what I've got on the on the list right now. So yeah, I've been drawing us also. <laughs> but you're gonna, where I'm gonna see him in Colorado, hopefully, and you in Missouri. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, because yep. that's a general. Yep. We should just make it happen. That's what we and, need to uh, do. And our, if nothing, our buddy got me hooked on Africa last year too, so I'm going again next year. And are you? I, I can't wait to go. I I think I'd go every year if I could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going next year also. Yeah. We went last year, and this year we couldn't go because of my husband's immigration status. Is um, he's still um, waiting on his green card, so he's kind of a hostage of the U.S. government right now here, <laughs> and so we literally cannot leave yeah. the country, and so we weren't able to go this year, and um, we're hoping next year. Yeah. We have we have a hunt planned, so we're looking forward to it. I'm, I love getting my bow over there. I mean, there you can go spot and stalk a different animal around every corner. Like you blow Absolutely. it on one, you're like, oh well, I'm gonna there, go stalk the next one. I something see. Else for it's sure. not like I have to cry. Like I just <laughs> waited a week for one stalk and I yep. I blew it or whatever. So it's actually a great place to learn uh, you, your it's stalking skills and all of that. So um, yeah, it's the best place for bow hunters. Oh, it's 100%. so one hundred percent. Yeah, it's so fun, and and I, we love going. And my husband's been going to this one place for about 10 years and so they're like brothers to him yeah. you know and and that's really the camaraderie that we have with bow hunting and and if you go to a place like africa whether it be south africa or namibia or wherever you know whatever country you choose to go uh, it is great because you you go around every corner and you know if you blow it on one stalk you're going to have more opportunities oh, yeah. and it's a great place to cut your teeth in bow hunting absolutely absolutely yeah, I'm looking forward to my next archery hunt will be Colorado, oh. same spot as you. And then we roll straight into Kansas for Whitetail with David and then um, and then back to Missouri. And, and we're, I'm super pumped. I cannot wait. This bow season, I think I'm more excited about my elk season than any because last year we just had so many close calls and I just feel like I've got Mike Tyson. Uh, it's like <laughs> black eyes. Like I just couldn't get it. Like I passed on some bulls and... Um, and, you know, I just didn't get it together yeah. with what I was looking for. And, and so this year, I'm like, man, I'm chomping at the bit. I can't wait. <laughs> but now that we've been shooting the digital site, I'm like, I really can't wait. Yeah. It'll be here soon. Yeah. Not soon enough, but soon. Yeah. We're, we're right around the corner. We've got a couple weeks out. But all of you guys, if you are interested in learning more about bear archery or Trophy Ridge products, I encourage you all to go online because, you know, bears got compound traditional and crossbows, which we didn't even yeah. get into the discussion of crossbows yeah. yet. So they've, you know, got a huge lineup there. And then Trophy Ridge's full accessories from stabilizers, releases, sights, um, everything that you guys would need to set up your bow and, and have a successful either hunting or archery season um, or target season, whatever whatever it is you want to do, we can get you lined out. So uh, those websites and, and you want everybody to follow you on social media, I'm assuming as well. Absolutely. So I think we're on all the channels. I mean, our marketing team takes care of that, but Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, we're, we're doing all of that. And then the website, we, we have a phenomenal website mm -hmm. that really does lay out all of our brands and products and, and does a good job of highlighting all the features. So that's probably the best place I say to, to check out what's going on. Um, and then, um, and now things with like YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the majority of the people that know information about Digital React have learned it on YouTube here over the last month. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a lot of great videos on the Digital React. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, check out all of our channels, and um, and I'm sure you'll be able to pick up the information you need. I want to thank you guys for your time today. Uh, we're super busy up here at this event, and I appreciate you uh, taking your time for this. And next year, you guys, all of you watching, all of you listening, if you want to win a truck... <laughs> You gotta get to DAC. Absolutely. <laughs> and this is the way to do it. Pick yourselves up a digital react site, shoot the 111, 12 ring it, and you're entered to win the truck. I uh, thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Wild Nud Cut Podcast. We'll talk to you soon. Hey everyone, chances are you'll be hunting in remote areas this hunting season with little to no cell phone service. And because of that, Onyx has a super awesome offline feature that allows you to download and save your maps within the Onyx app in advance of your hunt. 
Downloading the maps are super easy and it just takes a couple of minutes. So once you're in the field and you're using the Onyx Hunt app in the offline mode, it's not only going to save your battery life, but it's also going to mean that your maps are always visible and available for your use. Onyx Hunt gives you the freedom to navigate wherever you want to go. And now you can save 20% on your new Onyx Elite membership when you use the code WILD20 during your online checkout. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.